What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here. Alright, I feel it. So I don't think this is a dream. Two wins in a row. This is crazy talk. This is not the Chelsea that I've come to know and hate <laughs> this past two years. Um, I mean, honestly, I, I will say... I don't think Fulham were at their best today. They were pretty sloppy in possession. Obviously, they gifted us the second goal. But we played well. And honestly, again, you got Kukurei out there. You got Caicedo out there. Even in spite of that, still played pretty well. So I think Pochettino's finally starting to maybe get some sort of rhythm in this team. Now, granted, <laughs> we've got Burnley, and then we have a whole slew of top five or six teams <laughs> coming up so this could just be a short-lived victory but we've not even been winning these games that we should be winning you know you're beating Nottingham Forest couldn't do that beating Bournemouth couldn't do that you know so we're, we're losing these games which made it even more concerning going into the the games like Arsenal or Man City or Tottenham or any of the teams that are playing well this year so at least we can finally start to win these games, it seems. Hopefully, if we keep playing like this. Because, yeah, it just felt much more together as a team. And I do think Pochettino has a lot to do with that. Because you look at how the team was set up today. And I think one of the big changes that he made that really helped us is he pushed Fernandez back. Not only does that mean Fernandez is now playing in the position that he plays well. Now, he did get forward still. But he typically stayed back, and he is really good at that deep-lying playmaker role. Like again, you go back and watch that game against Liverpool when he was playing deeper. He was phenomenal. He was the best player on the pitch by far. So you drop him back into that role now instead of playing him further up the field. Now he can do what he does best. Not only that, but he and Caicedo are both sitting deeper, which now means Caicedo is not the lone man out there trying to do it all on his own and failing. <laughs> So he looked better today because he had a little bit more help in there. So I think that one change from Pochettino, it made us so much better. We controlled the midfield a lot more. Now Gallagher's push push further up the field, playing a little bit more of a 10 role, which means now he can put pressure on the back line of Fulham. And he's just able to sort of run. You know, He still drops in occasionally. He still helps out defensively as well. But he's much more a 10 today rather than a box-to-box -box midfielder. And I think he just he's much more suited to that type of role. Whether it's the high press or whether it's just being in that space to make something happen further forward, I think he's much better there. So you switch up that midfield and now instead of a one that can't do it on his own in Caicedo with Fernandez who's not great going forward further forward and Gallagher who's much better up forward is now back and forth. Now we've got two with one up. It just it felt much more concrete in the midfield. Like our formation was much more solid, and it showed today. We really dominated that midfield area, and it, it helped us so much. In the final third, things were a bit better. You know, Mudrik getting his goal, fantastic. I thought Colwell getting down the line today really helped because he's been a lot more constrained. It feels on that left side. He's not been a Either he's not getting forward or he's not been allowed to get forward. I don't know which one it is. But it's really isolated Mudrik because he's been the one out wide that we've been trying to get it to. But he's the only guy out there. So he only has one option, which is just run with it down the line. And typically, defenders know how to guard against that. So adding Colwell coming down that line as well, it let Mudrik sort of move in and out of that position a little bit. Opened up some space for him as well. So I thought that helped his game as uh, quite a bit. Broya... A little bit different type of striker than Jackson is. You know, Jackson will drop in a bit more. Broya tends to stay further forward. Um, so they're not quite the same striker, and I think today that helped us a bit. Because Broya, he looks a little bit stronger, a little bit more willing to put in a strong challenge on the defender. Whereas Jackson is just more willing to run. So a little bit different option up top, and I thought Broya did well with his chance. You know, still wasted his opportunities, but what Chelsea player hasn't? Um... And then Palmer as well. I think Palmer's showing he's got some class to him. Like he plays with some nice, calm, confident play, and it it looks classy when he's when he's moving out, you know, getting out wide, moving the ball in and out. 
uh, sometimes dwells on a little too long, but I'll, I'll talk about them individually a bit more in a second. But yeah, I mean, from Pochettino's point of view, I think he did a good job today organizing the team, reorganizing, adjusting based on what we've seen in the past few matches. I think he set us up a lot better to control the game and not just control possession, but also keep us moving forward as well and create a lot of good chances because we have struggled to do that in a couple of the past games. So on to the referees because obviously referees have been a big topic of conversation <laughs> these past couple weeks. Um, and yeah, I mean, again, you last weekend you've got Gusto going in for a fair challenge, wins the ball, his leg is, is after he swings through, his studs are up, but they catch the guy low, Dina was swinging into it, so not really much of a, a foul, but he ends up getting a straight red for it because, well, VAR paused the image on studs into his ankle, and the, the referee comes up, sees that, and already he's thinking, oh, well, I mean, if that's what it ended in, I mean, clearly that's a red, right? And it almost takes the whole thing out of context. Well, VAR today, for whatever reason, <laughs> I don't know what they were doing in there, but, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure coming up behind somebody and going like this on, on their back, I'm pretty sure that's a red card. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to hit somebody with your forearm, nearly punched Silva in the back of the head, Vinicius. So, how is he escaping with just a yellow card? How has VAR not looked at that and said, hey, that's not a yellow, that's a straight red. He's, he's swinging his arm. He's trying to hit him. <laughs> and he's just, he's apparently very lucky that he didn't catch him with his fist. I don't know how that matters in the context of it. You're still swinging your arm and you hit somebody in the back that's like you jump up and you swing your elbow into somebody. That's a red. So why isn't that a red? Hello? I mean, I know that England hates us. I, I get that. I get that for whatever reason they hate us, whether it was Abramovich, whether it's just, you know, we're the scapegoats for a lot of stuff. I don't know. I get that the FA hates us, but did they really instruct the referees to screw us over too? Because it really feels like a lot of these moments tend to go against us. I guarantee you, if any Chelsea player done what Vinicius did today, I guarantee they would have been gone. But because he's not a Chelsea player, and because he did it to a Chelsea player, you know what, let's be a little lenient on him. Let's not give him a straight red, even though he just smacks somebody in the back of the, the head, almost. <laughs> it's, just, it's insane. I, I really don't get it, and it needs to be looked at. And obviously they won't look at it, because again, it, I'm pretty sure it's just the PGMOL, they just hate us. They absolutely hate us for whatever reason. I don't know what. I don't know what caused it. I don't know if it's Mourinho's comments in the past and they've just attributed that to us because I know he. pretty sure he's made some comments about the referees in the past. But I don't know. It's just very frustrating. Obviously glad we got the win today, but I'm looking at that. And there were a couple of moments where Vinicius was pretty close to either assisting or scoring. And I'm thinking if he gets a goal today, I'm going to be pissed because <laughs> he should be gone. Um, and probably, honestly, suspended for more than just a few games. Because that's, that's not okay. You can't just hit somebody. That's not a part of the game at all. You know, it's one thing, if you're kicking somebody, you know, taking your frustration out and doing something like that, it's, it's not good and you should be suspended for it, but it also feels like part of the game. Swinging your arms, swinging your fists at somebody, that's not a part of the game. That, that's, you're basically trying to start a fight. So, <laughs> anyways, my rant is done. On to individuals, uh, Sanchez, once again, good shot stopper. Made a couple really good saves. With his feet, though, I mean, we've got to stop playing it to him. I know we like to play out of the back, but we can't keep going to him because, my God, how many times is he going to pass it right into a striker that's right in front of him? He's done it at least three times this season that I can think of. Liverpool game, Brighton match that just happened, and then today. And he wasn't punished on any of them, but any of them he could have been. You know, the Liverpool match, I can't remember how that one didn't go in. But the Brighton match, I mean, that's just João Pedro trying to be fancy with it and not burying the chance. And then today he got lucky that the deflection bounced right back to him. But it's it's too much. And even when he's not passing it into the striker that's in front of him, he's kicking it out of bounds. He's missing his target. It's it almost never finds its target whenever he's passing. Unless it's just side to side, he's not completing his passes. I would love for somebody to go in and tally up his pass percentage or whatever, his pass accuracy, 
without those side to side passes, without you know the the goal kick that goes to a defender or just passing it straight across, without those, I would love to know his passing accuracy because I would bet, I would bet money that it's not above twenty percent for this season. I would bet money on that because he has been absolutely terrible. I cannot think of a pass today that went forward. You know, not just a simple pass or right there. <laughs> I can't think of a single one that hit its target. So, yeah, it's just very frustrating that it's how we're built to play, and he can't do it. So why do we keep trying to do it? Uh, DeSassi and Silva, both of them did okay today. I thought Silva, obviously still just the the picture of consistency back there. Um, very rarely makes a mistake and just constantly doing his job perfectly fine. Uh, DeSassi still has those couple moments where... He's maybe a little too slow to play or defensively maybe not quite quick enough to, to read a situation and put himself in the right position. So both they're, they're forming a decent partnership. I still feel like DeSassi, though, he's not our best option. What I, Based on what I've seen from Chalaba and Batty Ashil before him, I feel like they're going to take that spot once they're fully fit. I don't know what that was, but that spooked me. So I'm just... So I'm just moved over there. I don't, I don't like that. Anyways, um, on to the fullbacks. Kukurea on the right. So, obviously, I'm not a fan of Kukurea. I've made that very apparent in the past. Um, and he got a lot of praise for his performance against Brighton. Why? Well, because he made a few good challenges. So, clearly, that negates all of the times that Matoma skinned him in the first half or the multiple bad passes or any of that. So, <laughs> maybe I'm just overly critical of him because I don't like him and so I really hone in on his mistakes. I feel like today there weren't as many of those mistakes. They were still there. I still noticed them because again, maybe I'm just more in tune to seeing those moments. But I will say I did notice more positive play out of him today than I've seen from him in the past. I don't know whether that's Pochettino finally getting him to where he should be. you finally getting him good enough to be a Premier League player. <laughs> Or if that's just maybe on the right side, he's more suited to that. I don't know. I mean, it, again, it's not like he was flawless, but this was the most decent performance I've seen from Kukurea in a Chelsea shirt. He, he didn't make that many mistakes. He actually helped us a bit in defense and going forward. He was more, slightly more positive today than he was negative. However, <laughs> that's, again, not flawless, still made those mistakes that in my opinion, drag his performance down. And there's just there's too many moments of that for me to fully trust him. But if he can at least put forward this performance, I feel I feel better about him being a backup than I did last season where I was just I didn't understand how he kept playing overhaul who didn't make that many mis didn't hardly make a mistake all season. Wasn't necessarily phenomenal, but he still helped us pretty much going forward. I I just I didn't understand how that was possible that Kukurea kept beating him out for the backup spot when Joel was out, but I'll, I'll I'll give Kukurea a bit of credit for today. So if anybody has been pissed at me, I don't know if anybody has been <laughs> my criticisms of Kukurea, but there you go. If you have been, I gave him his credit. Now let's see if he can continue it. On the left side, Colwell probably had his best performance today. He's been solid most of the season. But today, again, I felt like he was given a bit more license to go forward, and those moments really helped us because, again, it created a bit more space for Mudrik. I don't understand why my trash bag is just like... I have a trash bag over there, and it, I don't know if something like climbed into the trash when I wasn't looking, but it's just... It's apparently moving a lot today. Um... But yeah, down that left side, we looked a lot more solid because Colwell, in my opinion, he just did a good job of getting into that space and really helped Mudrik out a bit more. Um, didn't leave him so isolated. Into the midfield, as I already said, Fernandez and Caicedo sitting deeper really benefited both of them. Fernandez looked back to what I remember in that Liverpool match. Really solid coming out of the back. Really good on the turn. Doesn't give away a possession that often. Quick to get it in and out and... I think that really helps, especially with these teams that like to high press. You have Fernandez in there to get it out of that pressure really quick because he's good at doing that. So if we can keep him there, I think that's going to benefit us going forward. And then again, Caicedo today looked better. Not 
fantastic, not 115 million or whatever we signed him for, but he looks better today because he had help in there. You know, I still think he we wasted money on him. I don't think he's going to be as good as whatever they saw whenever they bought him. But I think he can be an effective player for us, but he can't be the only midfielder lying deeper. He he can't be that player because he's just not good at it. Um but if he has help in there with Fernandez and him sort of working off of each other, he looks like he was able to hold his own against the Fulham team that was trying to press him high. Now, he still had those mistakes. He still gave the ball away a couple times in a little bit of scary areas. But it was better today. You know, he didn't make as many mistakes. And he did look to get the ball forward a bit quicker and look to drive out a bit more. So... I, I don't think he's ever going to live up to the $115 million price tag, but I think today he looks a bit more like a quality Premier League player that can be effective for us, possibly. <laughs> I don't think he's necessarily effective in a top six team. I think he's much better in like a mid-table side, because that's, they, again, a lot of those Brighton players are. They're good mid-table players, but they all come together and they work together hard as a team, and that's what made them good. You take a lot of them out of that team, and we're seeing you know, the three that we've brought in have not really lived up to their price tags. The few that have gone to other top Premier League sides, you know, Basuma hasn't been great for Tottenham. Trossard's been okay for Arsenal. McAllister, not seen much from him at Liverpool. So it's, it's kind of one of those, you take them out of that team where they are playing well together as a team. Most of the time, it, it's not the same. They, they don't play as well without each other. So uh, Gallagher a bit further forward today, like I said, and I think that's his best position. You know, I don't know why last year Potter saw him as a deeper midfielder. Uh, we saw a bit of that from Tuchel um, at the beginning of last season. Lampard tried it as well. Pochettino tended to play him a bit deeper. I don't know why. I don't know. I know he's a hardworking midfielder, and I know he's really busy in there. But you look at what he's good at, and it's high press, and uh, most of the time his shots are pretty good. So I don't understand why we keep trying to play him deeper or either that or box to box. I just don't think that's his best position. I think he's better when he's further forward. He's allowed to just, hey, chase the defender. You know, put him under pressure, don't let him have time to play, and it causes a lot of that uncertainty whenever the defenders have it. So if we can all you know go off of his press, not just him all by himself, but if we go off of his press, there's a good chance that we can create an opportunity for us or at least get the ball back quickly because we'll make the defense make a mistake and maybe kick it out for a throw-in or something. So, yeah, I thought today looked a lot better, looked a lot more what I want to see from him. As far as the wings are concerned, Mudrik obviously got his goal today and, of course, you know, got injured, as did Broly after he scored, so... Again, I guess it's just a curse on the team. If you score, you get hurt. <laughs> That's what it seems to be. Um, I still don't know how our physio team, more of them have not been let go. You know, I know we, we did change over physio people, but then I think we brought back like the head physio guy last year at some point. I just, I don't get it. You know, as many injuries and as many recurring injuries that keep popping up at our club, you would think at some point somebody would step in and go, hey, what are you guys doing? What are we paying you to do? Because it feels like we pay you to get these guys fit and make sure that they're ready to play. And if they get hurt, that they can come back and they're fully fit and they're ready to play and they're not going to re-injure themselves. But it feels like players get injured pretty easily. And if they get injured when they come back, they get injured again. So what are we paying you guys to do? Because it feels like we're just paying you to sit on your ass and not do anything. So I, I'm, I'm still very pissed that that's not been looked into more. Maybe it has, and we just haven't seen it, but I'm still not seeing where that's happened because Broya, it looks like his injuries returned. You know, when he was hobbling off, it looked like he was feeling his knee. So how is he not ready to play? How have you guys not rehabilitated him to the point where now he doesn't have to worry about that anymore? And with Mudrik, I mean, I don't know what happened. I, I didn't really see much of anything in the first half, but then all of a sudden he subbed off at halftime, so clearly he was feeling something. So it's just it's very frustrating. But anyways, back to Mudrik. Again, good good performance today. I think having Colwell down the left side helped him because again, much more space for him to operate. He's not constricted to that left side. However, on that note, I will say if he's gonna play that wing position, he's gotta play like a wing. 
and he's not doing that. <laughs> there was one moment where Fernandez picks it up and he's coming inside, even though the space is out here. So I don't know why he's not further wide and then cutting in. And then there was another one where, um, can't remember if it was Broya. I think it was Broya, but somebody cuts down the line and cuts it across. And Fernandez has made a run to about the top of the six. Mudrick, instead of keeping his run wide and then curling in, also makes a run straight to the top of the six where Fernandez is. And then the ball comes right across where Mudrick should be to finish it off. So his runs still need a little bit of work uh, off the ball. But there are positive steps, in my opinion, which is good to see because he's kind of been sort of stutter stepping for a lot of this season where you have those moments where he steps up and he does something well and then all of a sudden he's just disappeared for the next 20 minutes. So better today because I did feel like he was a lot more involved and felt there was a lot more positivity coming from him today that I haven't seen from him in the past few matches. Palmer on the right side, I don't think that's his best position. I feel like... With the creativity he has, I think he's better suited to, again, play that 10 like we saw in midweek. But with that being said, I still think he's a quality player, and I think we're going to see more from him as we go. You know, he just he seems to be growing into this team pretty well, and I think if, if we can keep him fit and if we can hopefully centralize him a bit more, I think he'll be a very effective player for us. I think he's... I hope he can build a relationship with either Jackson or Broya, one of the two, but just really formulate that sort of striker attacking midfielder relationship that we saw out of like Havertz and Werner, where when one of them's dropped in deep, the other one's taken up that space that the other basically opened up for him. So, but yeah, today, another solid performance. Um, he, he did technically kind of assist the second goal. I know it's not going to be since... Ream kicked it off of Broya, but I mean he won it back and slipped Broya in, so good pressure from him throughout the match, and his quality on the ball is good. I do think we need him to stop dwelling on it so much, especially when we get into the second half. There were several moments where it feels like there's a lot of pressure on us, because Fulham are, I mean, they're trying to get back into the game, so they're high pressing. Every time one of our players gets a touch, it's essentially pressure right away so there are those moments where to relieve that you just knock it around make them chase make them wear out their legs especially after the subs come on you've got freshness so make that freshness not count for anything because you just keep knocking the ball around them and making them chase everywhere Palmer tends to dwell on it a little too much so it gets to him and there's three players on him and he had an opportunity to slip it to somebody else in space but instead he wants to try to dribble and take on somebody and it leads to now all this high pressure on him, and he's lost it, and now all of a sudden Fulham are coming back down at us. So especially whenever we're trying to relieve some of that pressure, those are the moments where he's got to learn to get rid of it a bit quicker. But that's about the only criticism I really have for him today. And then Broy up top, uh, I mean, got, got himself the goal, which is good, and he worked hard today. He looked pretty good overall. He's got to finish, though. I mean, he's, he's got to finish. There were, there were several moments where... I mean, you just you got to put it away. And again, it's similar to what I talked about in the midweek match against Brighton. It doesn't matter if you're offside or not. If you don't finish it, if you don't finish that one-on-one -on -one chance or that clear and obvious chance that you got, and then the flag goes up, everybody's talking about, oh, he must be relieved to see that. No. The form we're in right now, you bury that. And then when the flag goes up, go, okay, well, let's do it again. I've shown that I can put it away. I've shown that I can finish my chance. So next time when that flag doesn't go up, I'm going to put it in. And it's going to be a goal. Or, in the case of what we saw last week against Aston Villa, a couple times you just got to put it in because VAR will look at it and they'll see, assuming, you know, they don't do what they did to <laughs> Liverpool, but they'll draw the lines and they'll see, oh, wait, he wasn't offside. The AR made a mistake. Because a couple times that happened to us against Villa. So we've got to start doing that. We've got to start putting away those chances. Because there were several. Broya had one. Um, I know Matson and Fernandez both should have had one in the second half. Uh, Matson's off the post that fell to Fernandez and then right at the keeper. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's another one, though. I thought Broya had another one that was pretty just straightforward right there. Just put it in. Maybe I'm misremembering that. But, yeah, it's just, it's, 
because of the striker situation that we have, because Jackson's missed a lot of clear chances, now Broya comes on and he misses a few clear chances, you want to have a striker that consistently you feel he's going to put it away. You know, m Maybe not nine times out of ten, but at least seven out of ten, you feel he's going to put it away. With the strikers we currently have, based on what we're seeing, I'm thinking maybe one out of ten. <laughs> Because it feels like that's how it is. You know, they'll have that one opportunity that they bury, and you're just thinking, okay, well, maybe they'll go on a scoring streak, and then they don't score for the next three matches, even though they have three clear one-on-one -on -one chances that they should have put away. So, yeah, that's about it, though, as far as the starting lineup. As far as the players that came on after Matson, eh, you know, it's just it's okay. He's still... He just doesn't look like he's got the physical capability to play at this level. He looks a little too slow, looks a little too weak. So he's really got to grow physically if he wants to have a chance to play in the Premier League. Because I know he, I heard he did pretty well in the championship last year. And you would think the championship's a bit more physical, but I think the lack of quality overall in the championship, maybe he's able, he has a little bit more quality on the ball than some championship players do. So maybe he's able to you know, make up for the fact that he's not the quickest or the strongest. But in the Premier League, I mean, you've got to have the quality and you've got to have the physical capability. And I just, I don't see it from him. You know, there are too many moments where it feels like he's getting outpaced or he's a little, he's like a step too slow to step out. So, um, and then, who's the next one to come on? I think Sterling? Because it was Sterling came on for Broya at some point, and then Ugachukwu came on for Palmer. I think Sterling came on first, and I thought he had a couple chances that he should have, you know, done something with it, whether assisted or whether had a good shot on goal, and they just kind of didn't come to much. Um, he was playing as a false nine, which I don't think is his best position. You know, he's he does okay there, but I, I feel like eh, he's not quite the, that type of player. He's not the type of player that... You think about your, like, Gabriel Jesus, or um, who's another one that did that role well? I guess Aguero to an extent. You know, those those type of players that they're not the strongest, so they're not going to be challenging and physically bodying the defenders, but they are good at making good runs. You know, they, they their movement is what really helps them in those positions. Sterling has some of those qualities to him, but I just don't think he does it consistently enough to really think that he's going to excel at the false nine position. So I, I realize, obviously, without Jackson, you know, he's suspended, then Broya goes off injured. Your only other option, really, is to turn to your 18-year-old striker who you've not even given a chance to yet. And especially because Broya came off, I think, in like the 65th minute or something like that. Maybe, maybe a little bit later, but... There's still a decent amount of game left. You don't necessarily want to turn to your 18-year-old with that much game time left. Um, so I get that Sterling was kind of the only option, but I don't know. I I feel like I'd like to see maybe what the 18-year-old can do because sometimes the other team doesn't know what to expect either, so that can sort of help him a bit. Uh, and then Ugachukwu, you know, did, looked a little bit better than he did against Brighton. Um, definitely didn't give the ball away nearly as much, so that was good to see. But it also did feel like the game, the pace of the game had slowed down a bit when he came in, so maybe that helped him because the pace of the Brighton match was just very high intensity. So maybe he's just not good under high intensity matches, but if that's the case, then he's not going to be good against most of the Premier League teams because most of them play at high intensity. So, But today he did look a bit better, which is good to see, and hopefully he can grow into the, the pace of the games more often. Um, and then the final two were just, I mean, they were last-minute subs. Mat Matos and Matiwaki came on basically last minute, so nothing to talk about there. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's a good win. Uh, honestly, I kind of am at the point where I'll take a, a win that wasn't great. You know, we were, we were good today. And, again, I do think Fulham weren't really that good. So it was kind of a mixture of both where we played pretty well. Fulham didn't play well at all. So we were helped in that sense, but I'm kind of at that point where I just don't care about that <laughs> at the moment because we need to win. You know, we need to get those wins in. We need to get the points on the board because we're. Who cares if we play well if we lose one nothing to Villa or lose one nothing to, to Forest or can't win against Bournemouth? Who cares about those matches? Who cares about those performances if we don't get the results that we need? So that's kind of where I am now, and that's very rare for me to say, because most of the time I am the type of person where if we don't play well but we still win, 
I'm kind of frustrated. I'm like, yeah, but I want to see good football. We're not going to see good football, unfortunately. I just I don't think we're going to at this point because we don't really have the quality here that Bowley seems to be thinking that we're bringing in. You know, we got a lot of young talent that's unproven, so there's a lot of energy, there's a lot of desire to to prove themselves, but I don't think we're going to have the quality that I'm expecting to see out of you know the club that I love. So I just I kind of have to accept the fact that we're probably going to get some ugly wins this year. We're probably going to have to have some wins where we just outwork the other team, but it's not always pretty. We don't always get the best goals because we don't have finishers. Hey, it's it's a win is better than not winning at this point because we we need it really bad. So that's about all I've got. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on the match today? Let me know. We can talk about and discuss all the good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for future Chelsea reviews, and I'll see you guys at the next one. Peace out.